So we had the opening night of New Orleans Black Film Festival. Y'all make some noise for black filmmakers. Come on. And now y'all make some noise for the one and only Fiend. One, two, one, two. Yeah. We sitting under bright lights. We about to get into it right quick. Yes, Lord. So, the name of the film, y'all, that we're about to see and after we finish talking is called The Baddest Alive, right? So in the film, Fiend, you mentioned, you know, being inspired by Irwin and Fire, you know what I mean, at a very early age, and later on uh, being inspired as a teenager by Rock Kemp, right? Um, right. We looking at, with Irwin and Fire, 55 years in the game, they just did Jazz Fest. Uh, started out 1968, 1969, something around that time. Rakim just put out his seventh album, if I'm not mistaken, last week, right, where he's scratching on and producing as well as him seeing. Produced the whole project. Yes, indeed. So with that being said, as someone who's been dropping music and releasing it since 1995, what's been your formula for remaining consistent and relevant over nearly three decades in the game? First of all, that's a great question. Um, in the mix of this, all you have is your art, right? And then you got the bills, <laughs> right? But um, to this day, man, like, life, you know, life imitating art. That's, you know what I'm saying? Excuse me, art imitating life, excuse me. That's what's been going on, you know what I mean? I'm in my, my beginning stages of, uh, you know, learning my rights and wrongs that had that music, right? Then I got past my teens, then to my 20s, then you got that encounter of whatever life, and that represents, that music represents that. I've, I've accepted that there are different eras of my life. I, I'm fortunate enough to be here to express, right? That's why the documentary is so important because I feel like, um, I feel like my neighborhood, my community, really took a hold of me and saved my life because of the relationship my brother had with the community in Halle Grove, right? And my, my father, my mother, and my music to this day, man, if I'm happy, you're gonna hear it in the music. You know, if I'm, if I'm sad, only for a moment, because sadness don't last forever, it, it's gonna, you're gonna hear it in the music. If I'm in love, you're gonna hear it in the music, you know what I'm saying? So every opening my eyes right now is my biggest motivation every time I'm in the studio. I open up my eyes, I wake up, I'm winning, I'm going from there. Salute, salute, give thanks for that. Now I read on the gram recently that this is not just the first, but this is a three part series, that's correct? This is true. Okay, so the question here is why did you feel it was important to tell your story and why now? Um, in real time, I'm, I'm ridiculously happy. And I feel like there are a lot of people that love me, enjoy my music, that would love to know, my brother, how did you get there? So I want to share that for anybody that's in the dark, anybody that's gone through something, anybody that think that the bad days last forever, I want to let them know they don't. You feel me? I want to let them know a delay is not a denial. My mom always tell me that. And if I could do it, man, you damn sure could pull yourself by your bootstraps and find your happiness. Right. So I wanna talk about now. You know, I don't know how much time I have left. That ain't even my concern. But I wanna do it while I got this real air in my body and this real love in my heart, you know? Feel that. So you mentioned, we are gonna move a little bit. I know you mentioned, you know, growing up community and neighborhood, you know, with, with Holly Grove. So with that being said, I also saw that, you know, on the, um, on the documentary, you speak about the importance of your support system, right? Um, that was in place for you after your brother's passing. Um, what about that support system for you and the people within it uh, do you feel has provided the success, the longevity, and the steady trajectory of your career since the early 90s? I feel like the support system is what gave me the courage. You know what I mean? I feel like the support system gave me the courage when I didn't have it. You know, people lending me their time, people lending me kind words, people saving my life when I ain't know the value of it myself. This is selfless acts. And I can acknowledge that to this day. That's what shocked me about the documentary. I, I accepted, like, 
you really had help the whole way. You just didn't know you had help the whole way. And you was being blessed when you thought it was nobody saw you, you was broke and you know, uh, in a hotel and thought life abandoned you, you really still had help. You know what I'm saying? And I want to acknowledge that, man. Without the bad days, you can't acknowledge the good ones. And I'm here as a living testimony, and I don't want to take it for no type of gain. And I want to say that I love my city. I can't stress that enough. And I believe in more action, less talk. And I'm every day trying, it's not trying, I'm looking to figure out a way to make the quality of life better, not only for my family, but people outside my immediate family. That's why the doc is serious. I'm, I'm transferring music into the visual content world. And all you people are getting ready to travel there with me. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. if I could do it, guess what? They could do it. Yes, Lord. So this is a selfish question for me, because I'm from Holly Grove as well, right? Got to rep the set, 17 Wars. So with that being yeah. said, you know, you got j Dog, you got um, Nesby Phipps. Insane. You got PNC. Threat. We got um, DJ Soul Sister, who's been holding it down on Lil the station. Sl Lil Slim. Lil Slim. And then, obviously, one of the biggest rappers of all time, arguably the GOAT, Lil Wayne, all from Holly Grove. What is it about Holly Grove? What is it about our ward? What is in the water that makes us some of the most versatile, some of the most creative, some of the dopest MCs and artists and creatives, just generally speaking. What do you think that is? Me personally, I think that we're the type of village that when we look in our neighbor yard, we look to see if you need something not to take from you. Holler Girl don't get into a whole lot of mess. You know, history has served that. And I think that's what I'm representing to this day. You know what I mean? Think about this, bro. Lil Wayne was watching me the whole time. I could have been a piece of sh you know what I'm saying? And possibly he would have mimicked that. But the universe, ancestors, and God ain't let me do it. He was watching me. And he was able to take from that. And he's an extension of that. Look what, what he's done. He's responsible for Drake, Nicki Minaj, you know, Squad, and so many others, right? So um, I love the fact that our neighborhood is something unique. We don't get talked about a lot. Not enough. But you got to acknowledge us. You got to respect it. We're the sleeping giants kind of, sort of. You know what I'm saying? But a uh, holler girl definitely in the building. Shout out to the East. Shout out to every war, period. No matter where you're from, I'm so happy to have y'all here tonight. Yeah. Yeah, because we definitely about to have a little a little evening time movie cinema with each other. You dig? So I want to talk a little bit about our cultural off-room, you know what I mean? In, in The Baddest Alive, you know, freestyling is, is mentioned as well as battling, you know what I mean? This is a subject that comes up, you know, and one, from my perspective, humble perspective as an MC, it's important, you know what I mean? Um, when we think about that and, and think about hip-hop, it's all about showing improvement, right? Um, to some degree, you know what I mean, you look at what's going on in the industry, it, it's freestyling specifically is a lost art to some degree, you know what I mean, when you think about the freestyle, right, some folks pulling out their phones and things of that nature, right, um, as someone who's established their credibility, you know, as an MC off of battling and your name off of that, you know, why do you think that skill is less important to some people today compared to what, you know, for myself, it's supposed to be up there. The skill is a lost art because you are required to be a quick thinker. You got Google, you got YouTube for all your answers. But Google and YouTube can't help you with these freestyles. I think that we got so adapted to technology that we haven't allowed ourselves to be dope in the art form in that area. Freestyle involves you being a quick thinker. Read rooms, read people. Express, connect as an MC. That's a job. You hear what I'm saying? <laughs> and I think that it's easier nowadays to just write a few bars and walk in there, remember those bars, and just serve them that. At the end of the day, it's still a dope form of art. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm not knocking you just because you can't go off the top of your head. You know what I'm saying? But for those that do, I got to be like, where to go, homie? Where to go? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> So let's talk about, you know, um, keeping in that same vein, more or less, you know, hip hop just made 51 years last week. Um, with that being said, 
let's just say hypothetically, right? We all, you know, Lord willing, as a society are still here 51 years from now. With that being said, somebody come across a copy of There's One in Every Family. Somebody come across, you know, a copy of Street Life. What do you want listeners to know about Fiend as an artist, as an MC, as a person? Great question. I've been leaving messages in the bottle. You know what I'm saying? You know, God been talking through me, you know? Ancestors been talking through me. I can't take all the credit. Um, what I get out of it is you ain't alone. Through all the brolic, hard MC talk, you know, brolic, right. rah-rah, is still a man in his thoughts and getting through adversity. You know what I mean? That's what I want people to get about my story is that it wasn't easy. You heard me? But because of the fabric of human being that you are, excuse me, human doing, you attract the type of energy that you need. You feel me? And I really, really believe that energy makes matter and then it can make something that matter. So put out some good energy that creates some good matter, that creates something that really do matter. And that's where I've been at, you know what I'm saying? Like, I've been speaking, I know what my voice will do. I know what it'll do. It'll make some cats go ride in the bank <laughs> on a Monday, eight or five, you know what I'm saying? I, when, I, when I witnessed that, I started molding my voice differently like clay. That came to birth of International Jones, right? I closed my father's eyes. November 10th, right? I went to Europe. I told my brother Moses and my dad just passed. I'm making beats, I'm looking at my guys at five in the morning, they ain't telling me, turn that shit down. Because I'm making beats. They could they, they wake up and be like, bro, we sleeping. They, right? I'm going through them, nobody says nothing. You know, I'm, I wanna take this because life just ain't easy. And it's okay, man, that's the biggest, Picture. That's the biggest thing I want to look. It's okay, but tomorrow gonna come, and you gotta make sure that you there. You know what I'm saying? Everybody fighting something, bro. Everybody fighting something, and I know my music helped me therapeutically. I know it did. I know what I would have got into. I know how much I cared. I know how much I didn't care. You know what I'm saying? And um, I learned from my lessons so I can earn from. Them. You know, learn better than you earn better. Learn better than you earn better, no doubt. So you, you mentioned voices. So I'm curious, you know, you won't won't be denied, obviously is the track, well the album, excuse me, you know, Bad Motherfucker Live, the name of the track, which is off of the documentary, named that the documentary. So styles change right over time. People progress, you know, you mentioned your voice and people along with them. From my perspective, you're rapping in, in some places on the track in double time, you know what I mean? And that's not necessarily something that I hear that much, you know, from you. It's more, you know, melodic in certain spots. It's more deliberate and things of that nature. So thinking about that, why for you artistically or creatively, you know, what you mentioned in Voices, why is that no longer a thing for you? You know, that, that rhyme pattern, that double time. Um, I want the world to hear me. And much as I won't be the bad, dopest, badass rapper, I really want the world to hear me. And I feel like I have to be responsible enough to express it as such. You know what I'm saying? Why well, talk to the few when you can talk to the world? You know what I mean? I was signed a Rough Rider for four years. And no one knew how to deal with me over there. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I was like my own A&R, bro. I signed the Rough Rider, me and my brothers moved out there, my pops moved out there. I lived in a hotel for two and a half years, the Maritania Hotel. Then I moved to Yonkers for a year and a half, you know. I got into so much shit, just looking to pursue music. And to get at the top of the globe and to have people that had produced, executive produced DMX tell me, yo, fiend. I wanna hear you too, son. I wanna make out what you are saying, right? That made me say, I gotta be a little bit more selfless on the expression of my art. I don't have to be 100% compromising with that, but I wanna collaborate. 
So no, I don't compromise no more with anybody I work with, I collaborate. So we can put something together in a pot and make something, you know, that much more um, amazing. Right, right. I'm just thinking what you mentioned in, you know, DMX, Rest in Power, so many of our black brothers within hip hop over the last several years have unfortunately transitioned, right? Shock G, Black Rob, DMX, uh, amongst others. Um, and I'm just thinking, you know, as to, you know, black men on this stage, to hip hop MCs, like, what is your, you know, when we think about quality of life, you know, what does that look like for you from a health standpoint? Like, you know, as far as how you go about your daily business um, of taking care of yourself, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm interested in that with so many of us unfortunately transitioned over the last seven years. Um, unfortunately, all those beautiful souls you mentioned, we just can't pinpoint what was their time. It's like, is it their time or is it that there was something that they could have done to prevent that, right? Just to elaborate more on what you're saying, but me personally, it start with happiness. You know, the body reacts off of where your mind leads it. And if you give your body poison, it's gonna exemplify that. So first of all, I wanna acknowledge when I open my eyes, God, thank you for, for waking me up. If nothing else goes on in my life, I wanna say thank you for opening my eyes, right? I can look to my wife, and see she's smiling when she wakes up. Man, that makes me feel, I can't even put into words. I feel like I'm doing something right. And I'm, I'm not saying everybody has to be married to exemplify that. I'm just saying that happiness is the first goal, right? Walk, I'm, I'm not <laughs> Dwayne <the> Johnson <laughs> built like these people, but I believe walking, bro. Walking one hour a day will do you some justice, right? And as, as much as dead things you're gonna put in your body, like beef, chicken, put some things that's alive too. The fruit, the, you know, the salads, balance it all. Life is about balance. I'm not perfect, but I live a pretty damn good life. You hear me? And um, I expect of me to live long. You hear me? Yeah. Yeah, yes, yes. So this is the last joint before we get into this film. So, you know, um, for you, the first question, it's a two-part question. Do you feel there is a difference between Richard Jones Jr. and Fiend? That's the first question. That is also a good question. I was 13, 14 years of old, years of age, excuse me. My mother started calling me Fiend. She said, that's your name? Okay, I'm gonna start calling you Fiend. All right, I'm gonna let you know. If that's your name, I'm gonna start calling you Fiend because it's gonna stick. I really don't think uh, I do not think it's a big difference. I'm a hero and a monster. You heard me? I'm kind enough to get a kitten out of a tree and, and a monster enough to set a city on fire behind the people I love, you know? And then the second question is, you know, as we get into this film, what do you hope viewers of The Baddest Alive will learn about Richard Jones Jr. and Fee? Um, The people will learn that <laughs> I think for the record, I know who I am, I know what I've accomplished, but some will say I don't act like it. And I think this doc is gonna <laughs> let you know that that's confirmed, that I have no idea. I don't move like that. I love life. And uh, I'm hoping someone could be inspired, literally, and start tonight, tomorrow, on chasing their dreams and making them a reality. With that said, y'all, we about to get inspired and check out the Baddest Alive. Y'all make some noise for the homie Fiend up here.